hours after President Trump's stunning failure to side with U.S. intelligence agencies over Vladimir Putin on the subject of Russian election interference, the Justice Department announced it had charged a Russian woman in the U.S. for acting as an agent of Moscow. 29-year-old Maria Butina is accused of attempting to influence U.S. politics by developing relationships with American politicians and trying to establish back-channel communications. During the campaign in 2015, Putina asked then-candidate Trump about his policy toward Russia and if he would use sanctions as punishment. I believe I would get along very nicely with Putin, okay? And I mean where we have the strength. I don't think you'd need the sanctions. I think that we would get along very, very well. I really believe that. Well, President Trump has been reluctant to publicly accept a consensus from U.S. intelligence that Russia attempted to sway the 2016 election. Paula Reed has more from the White House. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. President Trump appeared to side with Vladimir Putin over his own intelligence agencies Monday. President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. And what Those comments drew a strong rebuke from his own director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, who said in a statement, We have been clear in our assessments of Russian meddling in the 2016 election and their ongoing pervasive efforts to undermine our democracy. U.S. intelligence agencies and the Justice Department, as well as bipartisan committees in the House and Senate, have all endorsed the assessment that Russians launched a covert operation to sway the U.S. election. The indictment charges 12 Russian military officers by name. Just last week, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein announced new charges filed by Special Counsel Robert Mueller directly linking the operatives to the Russian government. The indictment includes... 11 criminal allegations. And in February, Mueller charged 13 Russians and three Russian companies for running a troll farm to meddle in the election. Everybody, thank you. Rosenstein briefed the president about the allegations days before he left for the summit with Putin, making these comments regarding an offer by Putin all the more surprising. He offered to have the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer. An incredible offer. Paula Reed joins us now from the White House. Let's talk a little bit about this. Um, so we had the 12 Russians uh, indicted, and then lo and behold, we get another bomb being dropped. Paula, what can you tell us about this Russian woman who's been charged, Maria Butina? What exactly is she being accused of doing? Bettina is a 29-year-old Russian woman who is accused of trying to influence U.S. politics by developing relationships and back channels with key political figures here in Washington. The actual crime she is accused of is failing to register as a foreign agent. Now, if you are in the U.S., either as a U.S. citizen or a foreign citizen, and you're working on behalf of a foreign government, you need to register that activity with the Justice Department so they know whatever you're doing is on behalf of a foreign government. So that's the actual crime. But sources tell me she worked to develop relationships through the NRA, through religious organizations, through the National Prayer Breakfast in an effort to make connections with the Republicans to try to steer the Republican platform in a more pro-Russia direction. She even allegedly tried to set up a meeting between then-candidate Trump and President Putin during the campaign, but was unsuccessful. So, Paula... Well, I wanted to ask you, Paula, when I hear that, I, I, I hear sort of a lobbyist, and I, I imagine that sort of thing happens a lot. How out of the ordinary was her behavior? Well, like you said, I mean, this is something that a lobbyist would do, but her crime was failing to register. And one of the things that investigators do when they're trying to pursue an investigation, sometimes they'll get you on one crime. You run, ran afoul of a certain law because you may have evidence about crimes that other people have committed. So a lot of people view this as an effort to put pressure on her to cooperate, to share information she may know about other people. So, Paula, as we said, uh, this happened just hours after President Trump said he saw no reason as to why Vladimir Putin would try to influence the election. Here's what the FBI wrote in this document, in this court document. These lines, the lines established by Ms. Butina, could be used by the Russian Federation to penetrate the U.S. national decision-making apparatus to advance the agenda of the Russian Federation. What kind of an impact will this have on the special counsel's investigation? I mean, it's two separate investigations, but are they connected to the charges against the 12 Russian agents last week? 
Well, yeah, let's clarify. These were filed by the Justice Department. These were not filed by special counsel Robert Mueller. That doesn't mean that they're completely separate or distinct. In fact, the investigation into Bettina, sources tell me, has been running parallel uh, between the Justice Department and special counsel Robert Mueller. Now, the timing, as you noted, these came just hours after President stood on the stage with Vladimir Putin and said he didn't think of any reason why Putin would want to meddle in the U.S. election. Now, sources have told me that they believed actually Bettina was working to try to leave the U.S. and they were concerned they needed to act quickly. But the timing is conspicuous. It comes, as you noted, uh, just days after the announcement of those 12 Russian operatives working at the direction of the U.S. government. I think what you can read into this, the significance, is this is the first person who has actually been formally arrested arrested and charged for trying to meddle in the 2016 election on behalf of the Russian government. Because before that indictment last week, it was always a little bit of an open question. There was never anything definitive to tie this activity back to the Kremlin. And that's what we saw in that indictment. And here, we actually had someone arrested because there is no reasonable expectation that the 12 people charged last week or the 13 Russians charged back in February will ever see the inside of a U.S. courtroom. So these are people that are sort of inching closer and closer to Vladimir Putin. And, you know, a lot of people watched this press conference yesterday and were confounded by how it appeared as if the president was yielding to Putin. I'm wondering within the Justice Department, what's the conversation? What's the speculation as to why the president seemed to be doing that? There's enormous, enormous concern, particularly something the president keeps conflating. He keeps arguing that it's Democrats and the Russia investigation that is driving a wedge between the U.S. and Russia. He said that last night again on Fox News. He said it, he was he was disappointed that all of this turmoil here is driving a wedge between the U.S. and Russia, when in fact the overwhelming consensus of the U.S. intelligence community and federal law enforcement at the Justice Department is that no, Russia was working to drive a wedge between any two Americans it possibly could. The goal of the 2016 a meddling campaign wasn't necessarily just to elect Trump. It was just to sow discord and sow doubts about democracy. And they did that by finding any hot button issue. For example, Black Lives Matter, Hillary's emails, immigration, these troll farms, as laid out in these Mueller indictments, they would go on and try to stir up discord and disagreement and hostility among Americans. That was always their goal. So the fact that not only were they able to do that, but now they have a president blaming his own U.S. intelligence apparatus for the whole problem. That is stunning and truly troubling for people who work day in and day out to protect us from everyday criminals and tax fraud, all the way up to very sophisticated terrorists. Paula, that was just uh, one troubling and astounding detail in that press conference yesterday. Here was another when the president seemed to suggest that Vladimir Putin was open to having Russian intelligence officials assisting the special counsel. And I'm not going to make some of the analogies that were made on the late night talk shows yesterday, but that's simply not only astounding, it's sort of disturbing. It is disturbing, and we don't even have to try to be funny like the late night talk shows. We'll just stick to the facts here. That suggestion is that he's suggesting that Putin or the Russians could participate in the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 campaign. This whole investigation started as a counter espionage investigation, a counterintelligence investigation. They were worried that there were Russian efforts to interfere in our election. Now, any Trump subsequent connections to the Trump campaign? Well, as we know, we have several guilty pleas. Uh, that is ongoing. That is a point of contention for the president. He takes it personally. But again, the fact that the president would even be open to allowing Russia into any of our counterintelligence investigations is stunning and something that is certainly an offer uh, that the Justice Department and Special Counsel Robert Mueller are comfortable refusing. While they have not commented on the record uh, yesterday when we reached out, they declined to comment, but they did point to several cases where they have reached out to Russia for help in pursuing cyber cr criminals. And of course, Russia refused to cooperate in those investigations. Mm -hmm. So, Paula, just real quick before we let you go, your, your sources at, at Justice, are they telling you that, other than the statements that they've put out, uh, that was put out by the DNI, I mean, when the president says, I don't see any reason why it would be Russia that was responsible for the election hacking, are they saying anything at all to you about how that makes them feel? 
Well, consistently throughout the Trump administration, there have been repeated attacks on federal law enforcement and our U.S. intelligence gathering. And the president has described the FBI as being in tatters. One of his first trips was, of course, to the CIA, where he stood in front of um, a wall, a, a memorial wall, and sort of once again just talked about his election victories. He has not been uh, particularly sensitive or appreciative to federal law enforcement. So it is concerning to a lot of people, but this has been a consistent theme. This really isn't anything new. Now, to side with President Vladimir Putin's assessment of election meddling over the overwhelming consensus of U.S. intelligence. Well, that was taking it to a new level. But I think when I talk to the day-to-day -day sort of rank-and-file folks, this is this is nothing new. And it's specific to federal law enforcement. While the president ran on a platform that supports local law enforcement and police generally, his attitude towards federal law enforcement has been pretty verbally abusive, particularly through Twitter. And a lot of that, again, has to go to the Russia investigation. He's furious with his attorney general. He is furious with this investigation. Most of it comes from ego, but my sources generally, it doesn't really get to them. It doesn't help. Um, and there are concerns, though, specifically about how this could tatter international working relationships on important intelligence matters. Paula Reed, thanks a lot.